Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon. Jordan strikes again and Phyllis concocts a plan for Chancellor Winters. Today on The Young and the Restless Christine puts the brakes on her plans with Danny, Adam leans on Sally, and Kyle tells his parents that Claire took Harrison. All products and services featured are independently chosen by editors. However, Soaps.com may receive a commission on orders placed through its retail links, and the retailer may receive certain auditable data for accounting purposes. At Society, Daniel and Phyllis eat risotto. She wants to know what Lily said. Daniel tried to reason with her at first and told her it was only fair that she give him Princess Lisa and a few other games. She didn't budge an inch, so he warned her he was bringing a lawsuit. Phyllis supports him 100%. Daniel appreciates that, but warns that things may get ugly, seeing as she still works there, some of that fallout might fall on her. He's not saying that Lily would for sure go there, but there's a chance her position could be a casualty. Phyllis doesn't care, she can get a job anywhere. She's not keen to work with Lily and Devon after they fired her. She decides she could get the whole team to walk out with her. Omega Sphere is amazing and it is. What better way to prove it? Daniel doesn't want his mother to lose her job over this. Phyllis hasn't figured out her next move. She'll go and get the opportunity. Daniel worries about her tone. You're already cooking something up, aren't you? He wants to know what kind of opportunities she's talking about. At Daniel's place, Danny tells Christine they have the place to themselves. Tomorrow is the big day, he enthuses. He's created an itinerary for the tour to show her and is so excited she can't get a word in edgewise. She finally stops him and says, I hate the thought of letting you down. Christine explains that she got a call from an old colleague who had a case where the accused was specifically asking for her to represent them. She's known the person for a long time and they're in a bind. It could take months. Danny realizes she won't be able to go on the road with him. Part of her wants to turn them down. She's been looking so forward to this adventure with him, but as an attorney, when a once-in-a-lifetime case comes up, she can't help but be pulled in. Their love is also once-in-a-lifetime, so what to do when two things collide? In the jazz lounge, Nikki and Victor's party continues. Victor asks Nick if he's heard anything about Jordan. Nick says there's been no sign of her, maybe she did leave town. Victor doesn't believe that for a minute. Across the room, Jack questions Nikki about how she's holding up. He's so proud of her. Nikki stuns him by saying the party is alcohol-free, but she's not. She explains that when the drink was sent over the other day she freaked out. She convinced herself she needed to sip in case Jordan showed up. Part of the reason for the party was to lure her out of hiding. Jack asks if that was Victor's idea. Nikki sighs that it was hers, but Jordan didn't show up. Jack tells her this was a bad plan. Nikki argues that in the midst of it all, something amazing happened, I was able to stop, that's the amazing part. Being there with her friends and family, she was able to fight the urge to drink. I felt strong. For the first time I felt like I could beat this thing. I didn't need the alcohol. I have love all around me and I felt free. Jack marvels, wow, as Victor joins them and asks, everything all right? Kyle and Harrison arrive at the Abbott house. Kyle assures the kid that his great-grandparents loved their present. He says Tracy and Ashley have gone to bed, and it's time to brush his teeth. Harrison realizes his lucky bunny is missing and panics. I have to find it, please. At the club, Claire leaves, telling Larry the security guard goodnight. Jordan watches her as she walks away. At the Abbott house, Kyle and Harrison have checked the car. Kyle thinks the boy left the bunny at the table. He'll call his mom to bring it over. Harrison heads upstairs and Kyle pulls out his phone and calls Summer. She learns that Harrison left his lucky bunny and goes to look. She doesn't see it. Kyle hears the doorbell and lets her go. He walks over and opens the door to Claire, who has the bunny, missing someone. Kyle invites Claire in and thanks her. They banter about the importance of a lucky charm. Claire knows how important it is to Harrison and she didn't want him to go without it. She recalls that her lucky charm got taken away. My Aunt Jordan always had to have control over everything. Back then she didn't realize why. She recalls finding a pretty white stone and hiding it from Jordan. When she was alone she would talk to it and wished on it for friends and a real family, a happy life. One day, Jordan caught her and snatched it away. She told her wishing was for fools and all she could count on was her. 
Kyle thinks that must have been awful. Claire says she should go, but Kyle asks her to stay. At the party, Adam reflexively checks to see if he's heard from Connor. Sally thinks no news is good news. Maybe they're making progress and therapy is working. Adam hopes so. Sally asks how she can make this easier for him. Nearby, Jack tells Victor that Nikki fought off her urge to drink tonight. He thinks the dry party helped. Victor's very proud of his wife. At society, Phyllis wants to know what Daniel's plans are if he wins the lawsuit. He's taking it one day at a time. Phyllis rattles on about how exhausting it is to stand up for what you believe in. He shouldn't have to pay for trying to save his family. You shouldn't have to pay for that. Daniel wants to talk about something else. He asks about her and his dad. Phyllis says they took a step back and decided it was best not to pursue things. Daniel wonders if she finally realized that romance was never on the table. Phyllis complains about him shooting down the idea. Daniel thinks she should appreciate the friendship on offer. If you want to talk, I'm here to listen. Phyllis insists she's moved on. She laughs about Danny's ridiculous choice of choosing the bug. She won't let it slow her down. In Daniel's apartment, Christine agonizes about whether to take the case or go on tour. Danny won't hold her back. He loves her. The case won't last forever and neither will his tour. Christine feels this may be their last best chance. How can she walk away? Danny kisses her hands and asks her not to make any decisions until she sleeps on it. She's unconvinced that will make it easier and starts to cry. Danny wants to enjoy every second they have together, if it's going to be their last night for a while. They kiss. In the jazz lounge, Victor and Nikki slow dance, and Sally talks to Adam about their inspiring and enduring love. They kiss and decide to go upstairs. At the Abbott Mansion, Claire tells Kyle it's still new to her, having adult conversations without Jordan monitoring her. She went along with her because she was afraid what might happen if she didn't. Kyle points out she doesn't have to be afraid anymore. Claire tells him that she gets a little more used to being free every day. Harrison appears and is thrilled that Claire found his bunny. He hugs her. Claire talks to Harrison about lucky pennies and four-leaf clovers, and then Kyle says it's bedtime. Harrison wants Claire to read his bedtime story. Kyle agrees and sends them upstairs. He'll be up later. Once alone, Kyle calls Summer and tells her Claire found the bunny and brought it over. Summer asks if she's still there. Kyle says she's upstairs reading Harrison a story. Adam and Sally enter her suite and he asks, Where do you see yourself in 40 years? Sally thinks that's a trick question. He's angling to see if he's still in the picture. He asks, well, Sally certainly hopes so. Adam thinks they could do 40, 50, or even 60 years together. I never want it to end. They kiss passionately and he kisses her shoulder and neck as they start undressing. In the jazz lounge, Nick approaches Phyllis and asks how she got past security, given she's not on the guest list. Grinning, Phyllis assures him they did their job. One of them recognized her and said she could come in. She explains Summer didn't tell her there was a party. Nick wonders if she's fishing for a supportive compliment. She'll take it if he wants to give her one. In Harrison's bedroom, he and Claire are about to start their story when he announces he has to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Once alone, Claire looks around the room until someone shoves a chloroform cloth over her face and knocks her out. It's Jordan. Having dealt with Claire, Jordan looks in the direction Harrison went. At the jazz club, Summer walks over and joins Nick and Phyllis, who questions why she didn't tell her about the party. Summer says it's a Newman thing. Nick guesses she was worried she would try to crash. Phyllis teases that things about about to blow wide open for her at Chancellor Winters. I've got big plans. Summer asks her to please be careful. At Daniel's place, Danny and Cricket have had sex, and she resumes agonizing about what to do. Danny holds her face and tells her that it took them this long to find each other again, and they are meant to be. Whatever decision she makes will be the right one. They kiss. At the jazz lounge, Michael and Lauren says goodnight to Victor and Nikki and leave. Nick tells his parents he'll take off too. They puzzle over there being no sign of Jordan. Nick heads out and Nikki tells Victor, Well, I was wrong. I thought Jordan wouldn't be able to resist this. Victor promises they'll catch her. Nikki worries she's still out there coming up with new ways to torment them. Victor doesn't want her to think about that. Tonight is about them. They canoodle. At the jazz lounge, Michael and Lauren says goodnight to Victor and Nikki and leave. 
Nick tells his parents he'll take off too. They puzzle over there being no sign of Jordan. Nick heads out and Nikki tells Victor, well, I was wrong. I thought Jordan wouldn't be able to resist this. Victor promises they'll catch her. Nikki worries she's still out there coming up with new ways to torment them. Victor doesn't want her to think about that. Tonight is about them. They canoodle.